Hi, I'm Bry Cox with BryCoxWorkshops.com, and for today's Q&A, uh, it's how do you get that kind of out of focus background, right? How do you get you right on in focus but have the background out of focus? And it's kind of a common question amongst photographers, and so it may sound kind of basic, but here's the thing, when I do workshops, uh, we're still focusing on the fundamentals, even though I'm, we're doing like advanced techniques. Because advanced techniques is still, just like if you were to take a golf lesson or any lesson in something else, what are they gonna do? They're gonna focus on particularly your fundamentals. They're gonna be, how, you get, how are you at fundamentals? You're like, I'm great, let's see your swing. Pff, nope, okay, let's get back to the fundamentals. So with a camera, we've got three settings, that's it. F-stop, shutter, ISO. Those are our three. When we add flash, you know, we also uh, add maybe two more settings, our uh, flash controls manual, of course, and also our white balance, controlling those things all manually. But really on the camera, it's just three. You can go back to any camera, almost as long, as far back as you can go. You can pick up any camera, three settings, ISO, f-stop, shutter speed. So each of those has some controls. And we can control that out of focus, in focus background, uh, what's called depth of field with f-stop. And it, uh, depth of field is kind of this term we use, but it basically is saying how much depth out there in the field is in focus. If I'm taking a picture this direction, how much of that depth of field is in focus? And so we control that with f-stop. F-stop is just that size of the hole that's letting light into the camera. And think of it this way, the smaller the hole, the more focused all those little light photons are that are going in, right? The bigger the hole, yeah, we focused on a certain area, so those photons are coming straight in, but all the other photons from other areas, they're kind of coming in on angles like this, and they're kind of coming in a little bit scattered. And that scattered effect creates that out-of-focus look. So, also keep in mind, f-stop numbers are written in fractions, so a small number like f-22 is actually, uh, or a big number like f-22 is actually a very small hole, where a big number like, say, 5.6, right, is actually a very big hole. So you get to decide as the artist how you want that background to look. Do you want mountains behind me to be in focus? Do you want something in my foreground to be in focus? You know, and all three areas to be in focus? Or do you want me to be in focus and everything to be out of focus? You get to decide that. Just know when you change one, you gotta change the others. And so really quickly, the shutter speed. Shutter speed determines how long that F stop is open. So if you want to create the look of blur, like sometimes I'm shooting couples dancing at a wedding and I want them to be blurry as they dance, or maybe because they're in movement, I want them to be stopped, solid, right, stop in time. I can control that with my shutter speed. And then the last one is ISO. And that really controls what we used to say is grain, but now we call it noise with digital. It's how grainy or noisy the image is. We tend to like cleaner images and a lot of people say, yeah, but my camera. My camera's really good on those, on noise, on those high ISOs, right? But for, in general, <laughs> no matter how good your camera is, we want clean, sharp, beautiful images. So we tend to like as low of noise as possible. Just reduces time later, trying to filter, fix all those kind of issues and problems. So there you go, f-stop shutter ISO. I've got more videos on just those things on my website, brycoxworkshops.com. Remember, the better we get at those fundamentals and picking those things manually, the better we get at really everything we do. So if you have a question, post it below or send me uh, an email or a, a note and we'll answer it in one of the upcoming videos.